we have some new tools, we're developing some new skills, so let's jump into it. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, we've added some new tools. I'm hoping to add some new skills. So I'm getting into a bit of wood carving. I wanna add some wood carving to upcoming projects. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the tools that I got. I'm working on some Celtic designs. So we're gonna carve one into this piece of pine. So I'll show you how to draw the Celtic interlocking hearts and uh, I'll take you through some of the tools. This is not gonna be a how-to carve video because I'm very much learning how to carve myself, but we'll have a little look at this, see how the process goes. I'll show you how to draw the hearts, like I say, and take you through the tools. So let's do it. New tool day, my favorite day, and I've got a router playing at long last. Now, this is not gonna be the focus of this video. I'll just show you this, guys, in passing. Just picked it up, and uh, yeah, I said I'd share it with you guys. I can do a video on this later, but this is the Veritas router plane. Now, I've been after a router plane for ages. I've been saving up the pennies for a few months, and I went with the Veritas one. I looked at the specs and all the other ones, how they form, or the form and function of them, and what they come with, and I decided to go with the Veritas one. These are generational tools. They last forever, and they're really beautiful beautifully built. They're up there with the Lloyd Nielsen stuff. And um, yeah, it's a really nice router plane. I like the features. I like how easy it is to change the blades. I like how easy it is to sharpen the blades. So the blade heads come off and they attach to this little bar here. And it essentially turns them into a chisel so you can put them into the Veritas honing guide system and just sharpen them like chisels. So it makes it very, very easy. The additional blades, however, that doesn't happen to. So I bought a four mil blade just for doing a uh, really skinny dados and stuff. Um, but that head doesn't come off, so you have to sharpen this by hand. So that's a little downer, but um, other than that, it's a beautiful tool, and uh, I can't wait to get using it. So I finally added a router plane to the shop. New tool day, always a good day. Next up in the new tools, and this is what we're gonna focus on today, this is my set of carving chisels. This is by Kirsten, so uh, made in Germany. You'll know Kirsten by the, um, two cherry symbol. They make loads of different types of chisels and chisel sets. This is my first um, set of chisels by that particular manufacturer. They seem to be really well made. They're polished from end to end. And this is the 11 piece set. Like I say, there's a smaller set and there's a much, much bigger set which comes with all the chisels in it. But I think for starting out and seeing how I'm gonna go with wood turning, this is a good set to start with. So you get a flat chisel, a skew chisel, you get um, gouges, you have three different types of gouges. You have a V chisel and you have four different types of carving knives. And you also get a little water stone or whetstone. I'm not sure the grit. It looks like 4,000 and 8,000 or maybe 1,000 and 8,000, something like that. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna sharpen these tools yet. It's probably gonna be some form of hand sharpening, just looking at the bevels and how they're all shaped. Um, they're not gonna go into a jig, so it's gonna to have to develop some hand um, sharpening skills to keep these sharp. But it's all skills that are good to develop. Now, I bought these tools from Fine Tools in Germany. If you're looking and wondering where I got them, I always I recommend people to shop local if they can, but sometimes you just can't get tools locally. And these tools, to buy the, the Veritas router plane and this set was 100 euros cheaper to buy it from Fine Tools in Germany than it was to get it from here in Ireland. So I couldn't justify that kind of price difference. If it was 20, 30 euros in the difference, I'd always shop locally if I can, but when it's 100 euros in the difference to buy from Germany than to buy here, it was a no brainer. So that's where I got it. I got it from Fine Tools Germany. Again, not sponsored or affiliated. That's just where I bought it. Bought it with my own money. So uh, yeah, that's it. This is the Kirsten set of carving chisels, the 11 piece set. So that's what we're gonna to use today. So let's jump in and start the project. So now that we've looked at the tools, let's jump into the project. And this is, like I said, it's not gonna be a how-to. This is very much just me practicing to use these tools and it's not a tool review because I've only just got them. I wanna put them through their paces and then I can let you know how good they are. But from what I've used so far, they seem to be pretty good and are razor sharp out of the box, so that's good. Now we're gonna be working on some Celtic knotwork or Celtic artwork. And if you're not familiar with Celtic knotwork, go Google it. I'm sure you've all come across it before. It's some really beautiful and impressive stuff. Essentially, the knots have no beginning and no end. They represent infinity or eternity and all the different types of knots have different meanings like friendship, love, loyalty, fate, all that kind of stuff and it's eternal so the knot never or has no beginning and no end like I say and a lot of it got kind of um, adopted into Christianity but it predates Christianity so the Celtic cross is actually an older symbol than the Christian symbol of the cross. It represented the four elements. The Celtic trinity knot represented three elements so water, fire and earth and then obviously that got later uh, turned over into Christianity to represent the holy trinity that it got used as so it was kind of adopted into Christianity in Ireland and uh, Scotland and places like that. 
So yeah, what we're going to do today is the interlocking hearts. So again, it's a knot of two hearts and this was given, I believe, like we would give engagement rings today. So it's a, yeah, the intertwining of two hearts. It's a lovely symbol. Again, it represents the infinity or the eternity of love. And uh, yeah, we'll draw this out. Um, I'll show you how to draw. I know how to draw this thing, so I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to attempt to carve it out of this piece of point. So let's do it. Okay, this is our piece of timber we're going to work with. So hopefully you guys can see what I have me set up. An overhead shot would be much better for this, but I don't have an overhead rig set up, so we'll have to make do. So this is what we're going to be making. So I've already carved one out. So this is the interlocking hearts, like I say, and it's a Celtic design. And you can see the knot, it just continues on through itself. And that represents eternity or infinity. And you can see the two hearts are interlocked. Now, it's essentially, if you look at it, a square so the square is torn, so it's diamond shaped, and that's how we're going to start our drawing. So I have this piece marked out now, and I've just got the center point. So we put a cross on it, so find the midpoint of each side and just intersect them. And now we're going to mark out our square. So how big do we want to make it? We'll see what we can get away with. So I can get away with it about 80 mil either side. So if I mark 80 mil from my center point on all my lines, there, there. And 80 mil is about three and one quarter inches for you guys on Imperial. But you'll make it to um, whatever piece of material you're working with. So that's it. Mark 80 mil out from the center. And then if I just join up all those lines, I have myself a nice square. Just like that. So that's our square. Now we just need to decide on the thickness of our rope. So you can see the thickness it is. Um, you can make it whatever thickness you like. I like to keep it somewhere in around 10 to 15 millimeters. This one is going to be slightly bigger, so we're going to keep it 15 mil. Now, remember, if you measure down 15 mil from this line, you're measuring on the, on the 45 degree angle. So it's actually going to be, the angle will be bigger than the thickness of your rope. So you kind of want to measure it straight off your line, if you know what I mean. Don't measure down this line because you're measuring at 45 degrees there and your rope will end up being 10 mil, not 15 mil. So I'm just gonna mark all those points, 15 mil all the way around. And then we can draw our internal square. And so there's our square complete. We have the thickness of our rope all the way around. Now we want to draw the rest of it. So if you can see these two cross dead center of our square. So that's what we want to draw next. So I've just marked the center point of our square on all the edges and then marked the thickness of our rope, which is 15 millimeters. So now we're just going to join up these lines where they cross in the center. So now that that's done, we want, to we want to complete the design by just drawing in our loops, and it's very, very easy. So if you can see, the center line just comes around and goes back onto the edge of the square. This edge goes back onto the center line, center line to the edge of the square, and this edge back on to the center line. So let's just draw that in. We can freehand this in. We don't have to be super accurate with this. We can refine it later. Again, we're going to be hand carving this, so it's not going to stay perfectly straight. So you want to just try and maintain that 15 millimeter rope all the way around in an arc if we can. Again, just freehand it in, we can refine this in a little while. So that's the center line is going to come out and attach to here. Now I want to take this line and attach it back to the center line. So try and keep our loops the same. like that and then we do the same on the other side so take this center line and join it to this edge so that's our design pretty much done now it goes over and under so we have to just follow our square around and you'll see it goes under over under over under over and just walk that around the whole design so let's do that now 
Right, so let's finish this design with our unders and over. So let's follow this for now. So we'll start at this junction here and we're going to call this an over. So I'm going to get rid of that so it goes over the edge of my square. And then this is going to go under. So that joins to that. If you see what I mean. And we can just shade our under areas just to give it a bit of definition so we can see that it's actually going under. Then we'll follow here, it's going to go over this. So we'll get draw in them lines. Cross out those lines. You can see this one is now passing under. So again, just shade that in. And just follow your design around on its infinite loop. So around here, so this was an over, so this will be an under. So I want to maintain them lines. Again, it's traveling underneath this. So we'll just shade that. And so on and so forth. So we'll conti I'll continue on that and I'll show you when it's finished. Right, so there's our completed design. So you can see it's just essentially a square and you join the center section to its edge, the edge to the center section, center section to the edge, and the edge back to the center section, and then just follow your loop around. So it's an infinity loop. As you can see, it heads all the way around and back on itself, and just start with an over, then an under, follow it around, and under, over, under, over, under, and so on, and it'll shade where it goes under, just so you can see, it gives you a bit of contrast. If you are drawing it, that's what you do, so you can see the contrast, and it also helps then for you when you're carving, you can see what's going under and what lines need to be continued where. So that's it, nice and simple. Again, it's just a square with a cross in the center and you join the cross to the edges. So it can't be more simple than that. Now we're gonna carve this thing out, so let's get on it. Okay, now that we have our design all drawn out, it's time to carve this thing out. Now, like I said at the start of the video, disclaimer here, this is not a how-to carve video. This is just a watch along and you can see what I'm doing. You can see the tools and maybe if you guys are into carving or you wanna get into wood carving, you might get some inspiration from this. So I'm gonna to attempt to carve this now. I'm not a carver, I'm new to carving, so I know a little bit about it, but yeah, let's start carving this, and the first thing we're gonna do is trace around our lines, so let's do that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get these lines carved out, and I'm gonna use the V-shaped chisel to do this, and this is where drawing um, and shading the under areas is pretty good, so you know where to stop. So I'm gonna start right on the line here, and I'm gonna start carving. Just following my line. And just taking care to stop where it goes underneath. So we just want to carve all our outline. And then we can relief carve that out. It was very easy to slip with these chisels and go too far. I done that a lot yesterday and I just done it there again now. That's one thing, it's developing a practiced hand for the carving is going to be the thing. Try not to slip over your design. So I went a little bit over the edge there, but we can rectify that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around the entire outline of this now with the V chisel, making sure that I cross over and go under and stop my lines where they need to stop. Right, so now that all my outlining is done, I've taken care to get my unders and overs all right. What I need to do now is to have to take down all the material around this. So now that I have lines to work to, so I'm gonna use my gouge just to gouge this material out and work to these lines all the way around. This is where the larger gouge now would be much better. This set is quite small and it's for quite small jobs. And it's gonna take me quite a while to relieve all this down. So I have to gouge to all these lines like I'm saying. So I'm gonna get on and do this now. And start taking this down all around, taking care not to dig into my line. And we are essentially gonna relief this design from this piece of wood. Okay, here's where I'm at. I'm starting to get the design now to come out of the wood. So I'm trying to go with the grain as much as possible. It's a lot easier to remove a material that way. You get a much 
cleaner finish. Um, obviously this gouge is very, very small. So that set that I got, it's for doing small relief or small carving work. Um, I'm gonna add a couple of larger gouges to the set. I'm gonna buy them individually for doing larger pieces like this. Well, as you can see, I'm just working up to my lines. And then when I get close to my lines, I'm using the knife just to score that edge and give me a clean line so that I can work deeper. And then you kind of end up with a, a wall that you can work against and you can use your chisel against it. So it's nice and simple. Again, working with the grain, just to try and relieve that out of the wood. Like it'll be a lot easier to use a router to do this, a small handheld router or maybe a Dremel tool or something like that. But again, it's the hand tool side of that I really enjoy. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm gonna start into the center now, start taking down these pieces. And again, I'm gonna try and go with the grain. It's just faster and cleaner. Again, I've scored around all my lines, just deepen it with the knife after I've cut it with the V cut. Just so we can establish kind of a knife wall to work against. Right, now that most of the shape is carved out, it just requires some cleaning up, but I want to add some um, more dimensions to it now. So everywhere the rope passes underneath itself, I want to just um, chamfer that down. So for here, for instance, this is going underneath this one. So we want to just accentuate that a bit. So I'm just going to chisel it down just like that. Just so it looks like it's disappearing under it. And then we can do the same from this side. And anywhere that rope disappears under itself, we'll just chamfer it down like so. Right, there we go. We have all the chamfers done now, so the rope looks like it's disappearing underneath itself. So we have that kind of infinity loop now, and you can see the two interlocking hearts. So um, it's a nice Celtic knot showing the eternity of love. That's the, the idea to the symbol. And uh, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Again, it's only a practice piece. I'm not gonna go too far on this. It's just a quick demonstration, just to show you how to do one of these knots. Give you a look at the tools that I've got today. So we'll throw a bit of Danish oil on it now, just for a little bit of contrast. Hopefully it'll bring it up a little bit more. We'll spill that in there. Again, this um, wood carving is a whole other world in the woodworking, under the woodworking umbrella that you could dive into. You could just solely do wood carving and nothing else. But like I say, it's just a skill that I'm gonna try and develop um, so I can add it to my projects. So I wanna do some detail work on some boxes. I wanna add some of this Celtic design and rope work and knot work to some of the upcoming boxes. So again, it's gonna be a case of practice, practice, practice. And uh, that's a decent little set I got. I do wanna get some more, um, some bigger gouges, just because doing anything this size, that set it might be a little bit small. It's kind of for more finer detail work. But uh, yeah, there we go. One Celtic knot. Right guys, there we go. That's just what I'm at in the shop today. So I said I'd share it with you. Hopefully you get some inspiration from it. Hopefully you like some of these Celtic designs and some of it's not work. Some of it is, is amazing stuff. Some of it is unbelievably intricate. I've seen some fantastic wood carvers do the real detailed knots, amazing stuff. Um, it's a lot of work to get to that level, but we'll progress and we'll try and we keep trying to develop the skills. I wanna add some of that rope work to some of the boxes in upcoming projects. 
maybe do some nice gift boxes with the interlocking hearts or the loyalty or friendship knots, that kind of thing. So um, I really like the artwork, like I say, and hopefully you guys found some inspiration from this too. The double interlocking heart is a good one to start with because it's not overly complex and it's a beautiful symbol with a really nice meaning to it and it would look lovely on top of a box for a gift for a loved one in your life. So yeah, there we go. Now, I am on Instagram. Some of you guys are following me there. It's a great way for me to just post stuff up and answer your questions on there. You were on to me about how am I going to sharpen these chisels and stuff. I'm not sure yet. I can see myself. It'll be all hand sharpening. I'm going to test the water stone that came with this one. It doesn't seem to be too bad. It's a bit on the small side, but it might be good enough to keep these things sharp. If not, onto the scary sharp sharpening system, sharpening everything by hand because there's so many angles and so many bevels on this. They're not going to go into jigs, so it's going to have to be hand sharpening. So it's another skill that will have to be developed. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I can keep these things razor sharp and uh, hopefully the wood carving keeps progressing. That's my first attempt at wood carving, my first attempt at Celtic artwork. And uh, yeah, it's just a bit of practice and a bit of fun in the shop today. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. If you have, don't forget to hit thumbs up button. Comments and questions below. I will get back to you. Any questions you want to know, just be sure and let them in the comments below. And uh, that's it. I'm going to get out of here now. So I shall see you next one, guys. Take it easy.